good morning. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Motivational Monday for Change Life Virtual Educational Ministries. And we have a wonderful topic that we are going to be discussing today, which is dealing with overcoming life challenges. Um, one of the things that has always been a problem in so many of our lives is the fact that when we when we give our life to Christ, we think everything is going to be perfect. It's going to be sunshine, rainbows, uh, beautiful flowers, no more problems, no more situations. But then life hits, and that's when we realize that that's when the enemy is going to throw everything, including the kitchen sink, at us. Why? Because we're no longer on his team. We're no longer on his team. See, once we was on his team out in the world, yeah, we had fun. We had good days. Uh, everything seemed like it was it was good for us. And then slowly little things started to happen. And what I want to explain is that that shift from when you was in the world and little things started to happen. It wasn't so fun anymore. Something was missing to when you become a believer and then you then life hits and you see it's not as easy as you thought it was not to be a believer but to deal with life and one of the problem is because we are not being taught that just because you're saved doesn't mean that the enemy is going to take his hands off of you. We're not being taught that. So today I want to kind of show you how to deal with those little life challenges that come to you. Uh, again, this is Motivational Monday. Uh, I am Bishop Alec over Change Life Virtual Educational Ministries. And uh, we have a wonderful topic today we're going to have some wonderful nuggets that we're going to give you and i hope it truly bless your spirit our opening verse is coming from john 16 and 33 and it reads i have told you these things i have told you these things right that in me so that in me you may have peace in this world you will have trouble but take heart, I have overcome the world. So this here is, is just coming out the gate. It's helping you to understand that, you know, even Jesus was in the world. He had to deal with sinners. He had to deal with the life challenges that came with the world. But he overcome it. Why? Because he was setting the example that you too can overcome it. You just have to believe in that. You see, when we was in the world, the enemy, he yeah, he was he was giving us money. And I'm saying he was giving us money. In other words, he opened up the resources for us to be able to have money, be able to have fun, partying, uh, just doing different things to, to enjoy life because we was in the world. And we thought this is it. We are exactly where we need to be. We, you know, we, this is perfect. And every once in a while, he would allow us to go to church because he wanted you to take that same enjoyment that you was having now to convert someone else. So I know you was wondering, okay, well, that God had to be in there because I was going into the church building. Well, the reason you're going into the church building. Well, so that you can convert someone else. So the enemy allows us to go to church, even though we're out in the world. He allows us to go to church because how else can you get someone that's in the church out of the church? So during that time when we was in the world and we was on, on team Satan, everything seemed like it was nice. We was having fun. We was popular. We was the go-to person. And then slowly we started noticing that 
people didn't want to hang around us like they used to or, or we couldn't we wouldn't the go-to person anymore or we couldn't uh have the same fun that we was having because something was missing well that's what the enemy does the enemy satan he gauges how loyal you are to him and when he began to notice that you have developed see the enemy operate based on habits so when the enemy noticed that you have developed a habit of when you have a hard time you go into this deep depression then he's going to make sure because one he want to get you on his team two he want to keep you on his team three he want to torture you while you're on his team remember those three things he want to get you on his team he want to keep you on his team and he want to torture you while you're on his team so if he know that you have this this thing with depression or you have this thing with anger he's going to make sure that you're in situations where those two uh, negative things are are up front he's going to put you in a situation where anger arises because he wants he wants you to develop a habit of reacting in anger reacting in revenge reacting lying reacting depression he wants you to develop those habits so he began to allow you to be in situations knows i said allow you because he he can't put you in those situations he can only allow you because just as god operated free will so do the enemy so he begins to allow you to be in those type of situations where you now start to develop a habit of operating in anger or you develop a habit of operating in doubt or you develop a habit of operating in in uh, revenge so so now he's building up you in that negative stance so once he's gotten you to the point where this has become a habit for you this is the way for you to operate then that's when he just opened up the floodgates and that's when it seemed like all hell has broke loose in your life why because you have developed that habit of operating in a negative manner so that's how the enemy transition you from having fun being popular being well liked to being in a, a bad place of depression or anger or wrath or doubt or unbelief i know some of them sounded similar in 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 definition but the point is anything negative he's gonna he's gonna he's going to allow you to get into a habit forming of handling things negatively instead of handling things positively so jesus is telling you that these are things that i have told you that you may have peace in this world that you may have peace but in this world you will have trouble so when we when we make a decision to give our life to christ we got to remember giving our life to christ takes us away from team satan so what makes you think that he's gonna stop messing with you because you're on team jesus now now he's got to get you back on his team so he's gonna come at you with everything that he has But we as leaders, we we got to we got to we got to tell the people the truth when they decide to get a life to Christ. We got to tell them the truth. It's not gonna be all sunshine, all rainbows, all roses. The enemy is gonna come at you and he's gonna come at you hard. Because he wants you back on his team. 
But Jesus set the example of letting us know that we can overcome the world. Why? Because he did. And because he overcome the world, he gives us the tools so that we can overcome the world. Challenging me to come, challenging come to everybody. Challenges come to everybody. Challenges come to everybody. Now, we we are learning how to overcome life challenges. So, the first thing we got to remember, which is what we were just talking about, challenges come to everybody. You're not exempt because you're in the world. You're not exempt because you're a child of God. Challenges come to everybody. Satan is not going to take a break because you're a new Christian. This is the time more than anything he's going to come at you. Why? Because you're a new Christian. So let's look at 1 Corinthians 10 and 13. This is one of my favorite, favorite scriptures. 1 Corinthians 10 and 13 says, No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. So number one, anything bad that's happening to you is not God punishing you. It's not God putting these things on you. God allows these things to happen for these reasons. And let me give you the reason. The reason God allows uh, negative things to happen to you is one, he got faith that you could overcome it. Why? Because his son overcame it. So he got as a, as a person. His son overcame it as a person. So he's got faith that you can overcome it as a person. That's number one. Number two, number two, he, he allows these things to happen to you not to punish you, but to correct you. To correct you. To show you the way that you was going is not the right way. So I need you to make a turn from the way that you're going. Because that the way you're going is taking you down a bad path. And then the third one is to teach you a lesson. It's kind of like when you put your hand on the heater... And your mom hit your hand and say, don't do that. But but if you decide to do it again, your mom lets you put your hand on there and realize it's hot. Teach you a lesson. So the first one is because he got faith in you that you can overcome it. The second one is to correct you. He allows these things to be going on to correct you. But... He tells us in 1 Corinthians 10 and 13, even though I'm allowing these things to go on to correct you, I've already gone ahead and provided you a way of escape so that you can endure it. So in other words, he's already went ahead and provided you a way out. We get so caught up in looking at what we're going through, we miss out on the obvious answer of our way of escape. So he allows this correction to go on, but he's already prepared you a way of escape. And then the third one is that he's t- he's allowing you to be taught a lesson. That that heater is hot. Stop touching that heater. He's allowing you to see that the world is hot. The world is wicked. Stop conforming to the world because it's wicked. So when you're going through these things, it's not to hurt you. It's to help you. So stop blaming God every time bad things happen. You want to blame God.
practical things that we can do to overcome life challenges. There's four of them. Practical things that we can do to overcome life challenges. So let's take let's take a look at those four practical things that we can do to overcome life challenges. We already know that when we're going through things, this is God allowing us to go through these things because he has faith in us, because he wants to correct us, and because he wants to teach us a lesson. We also know that when we are going through these things, the enemy is building up a negative habit for me in our life, and that's how he gauges our dedication to him. And, and then also we know that when we are going through things, we're going through these things, uh, the enemy has to operate within the same free will system that God operates on. He can't force you to do anything, but he can, he can manipulate things to get you to go down the path that he's trying to get you to go on, but he can't force you. So you have free will to, to do wrong and remain wrong just as well as you have free will to do right and remain right. So the first one is coming from Proverbs 4, 20 and 23, and it's called guard your heart. That's number one. You got to guard your heart because your heart is where your spirit man lies. So you, you, every day you're battling with good or bad. Your spirit wish to do right, but your flesh wish to do wrong. And it's a battle all day long. But the gauge system in which one is going to overcome the other is your thoughts. It's your soul man. Your soul man is, is the gauge system on which one is going to overcome the other. So if you are thinking positive and you are believing positively, then your spirit man will overtake your flesh. But if you are are thinking negatively and you are believing negatively and you are allowing depression or discouragement or doubt to, to overcome you, then your flesh will overtake your spirit. So let's look at Proverbs 4, 20 and 23. It says, My son, attend to my words, incline thy ear unto my saying. Let them not depart from thy eyes, keep them in the midst of thy heart, for they are life unto those that find them, and health to all their flesh. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. So the more you allow your spirit man to overcome your flesh, the more you begin to walk in the same habit that I was talking about the enemy does. God does that same habit. He has you to build up a habit of, of handling things in a more positive and righteous way. So because of that, the more you begin to engage in a more positive and righteous way, and obedience to God, the more you begin to enjoy the issues of life. And that is how even when it's raining outside, you can still find peace and enjoyment. Because you have developed that habit of doing things in a more positive way and not giving in to depression or discouragement or doubt or distraction. So guard your heart. Number two, overcome evil with good. And that's coming from Romans 12, 19 through 21. Overcome evil with good. And that, again, that just lined up with what we were just talking about, which part of you is going to overcome the other. Is your spirit going to overcome your flesh, or is your flesh going to overcome your spirit? Overcome evil with good. So it says, dearly beloved, this coming from... From Romans 12, 19 through 21. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, say the Lord. Therefore, in thy enemy hunger, 
feed him. If he hungers, feed him. If he thirsts, give him drink. For in doing so, in so doing, thou shalt heap coals and fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. So in other words, if you try to do the repayment when someone do you wrong, if you try to do the repayment, it's just going to make bad matters worse. But when you give place to God to do the repayment, I, I tell people all the time, I'd rather deal with man than deal with God. So all those people that be doing you wrong, scandalize you, hurt you, whatever, uh, yeah. If you have an opportunity, and, and I tell my people at Change Life this all the time, I can do ministry work with you. You could have been just got through scandalizing my name. And I can get in the trenches and do ministry work with you. I can put my personal feelings to the side and do ministry work with you. Why? Because I am focused on God getting the glory. I am focused on bringing people to the kingdom of God because I know the peace that I have being a child of God. So I can do ministry work with you for that purpose. But oh my goodness, when we come out of that trenches, when we come out of that trench, you need to go your way and not go mine. We don't need to have no more conversation until it's time to do ministry work again. So I'm saying it in that manner for you to understand, I can do God's work with you, even though I know you don't like me. I can do God's work with you, but I'm choosing not to have that relationship with you. But I'll help you in the way I can. But I just choose not to have that relationship with you because you're not on the same uh, mental desire that I'm on or righteous. Let me put it that way. You, you're not on the same righteous desire that I'm on. But I'm not going to repay you in the same manner that you did me wrong. I'm going to give that to God and let him do it. Because he, sa he says in, in uh, Romans 12, 19 through 21, he will repay because vengeance is his. He will repay. So I don't have to do anything. Keep exercising your faith. Romans 4 and 17. And it reads, as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom ye believe, even God, who quickened the dead, and calleth those things which be not as though they were. So keep exercising your faith. Keep calling into existence those things that the world is trying to tell you you'll never have. It's not for you. You you know, you might as well just give up on that. Quit exercising what they are saying and begin to call those things that are not as though they are. This is exercising your faith. You keep you keep forcing yourself to believe that it will happen. I just have to keep believing. It will happen. For the last couple of weeks I've been saying, you know, the situation occurred with the uh, getting ready to move and the situation with having to move and, and in the process of getting ready to move people that was going to do certain jobs to get the house ready all of a sudden bailed out and and so then that started halting the project from going forth and one day I just had to get into my secret place with God and just begin to pray and say, God, you know what we got to move. You know this. So I need this situation worked out. And I'm going to take my hands off of it because I'm going to mess it up every time. And so not only is this situation being worked out, but it's also being worked out at a financial uh, effectiveness. So keep exercising your faith. Call those those things that are not as though they are. Take small but positive steps. 
takes small but positive steps. Psalms 40, 1 through 3. And it says, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of an horrible pit, out of the mire clay, and set my feet upon a rock, and established my going. And he has put a new song in my mouth, even praises unto our God. Many shall see it and fear, and shall trust in the Lord. That fear there is not like a scary fear, that's a respect. They should see that you are operating in a more positive way. Even though you, you're still going through situations, but you're operating in a more positive way. And because of that, that will cause a change in many of them. And they shall begin to trust in the Lord because they see what how the Lord is, is dealing with you. So take small but positive steps. You don't have to make no big showing, no no big announcement. No, you know, I, I tell my people at Change Life now, move in silence. Stop stop using uh, social media to announce your comings and going. Move in silence. I hate to use this, but this is a good this is a good way of understanding. Uh, let's take a snake. Let's take a snake. Let's just be be real with it. A snake when they are moving, they're you don't you don't hear them moving. Now sometimes you may when they get closer to you, you may hear them. Or if it's a rattlesnake, you may hear the rattling. But typically, as they're sliding, they're they're sliding in silence. You don't hear them. That's the same concept. Move in silence. Stop making a big showing of what you're doing because there's people out there that's gonna pray against you that's gonna that's gonna talk down about you for this past year i've been working on getting my my uh degree in in ministry work i've been working on getting my degrees and people didn't even know that until they saw the the degrees that i was posting on facebook but I've already completed the class. So they didn't have time to pray against me because they didn't know what I was doing. That's why God had me to move in silence. So right now, you know, now that you're hearing this, if you think, okay, well, I, now I can pray against her. You know, she ain't going to gym, get nothing else. Well, guess what? I've already obtained my doctorate degree in divinity. So I can put doctor in front of my name. I've already completed it. But you didn't know about it. So I took those small steps, but I took them in silence. I didn't make a big showing about it. Because I knew what the end result was going to be. But I knew that in order to get to that end result with a smooth transaction, I had to move in silence. So I had to take small steps in order to get to the larger picture. So take small but positive steps, not negative steps, small but positive steps. Reflection. There's two definitions for reflection here. The first one is serious thought or consideration. Okay? We definitely have to reflect on things that we have done each day. Take take a moment in your day and reflect on those things. Did you did you make all the righteous decisions? Did you say all the righteous things? Did you do all the righteous things? Or was there times that you messed up? Or it was the time that you allowed yourself to go to a bad place. And if it is, guess what you do? You repent for those times. You repent and you keep it moving. You don't stay in that, oh, I can't believe God I allowed them to take me there. I can't believe I allowed them to, to make me say and do that. We have, we are, we're human and we're sinful by nature. So, yes, sometimes we get into a bad place. But you don't have to stay there. But every day, take 
serious thought or consideration about how you handle things. And the next one, the next definition is the throwing back a body or surface of light, heat, or sound without absorbing it. I want to use this in the reflection to help you to understand that reflection is is a good way of what you take in based on reflection is what you you throw back out what you take in is what you throw back out but when we're dealing with life challenges sometimes sometimes you know there's positivity that wants to come in but we are we're reflecting negativity so much to that positivity is is can be absorbed can actually be absorbed so when we're dealing with reflection take in positivity and reflect back positivity and let that become a habit of doing so does that mean that you're going to always make the right decision or say all the right things? No. I, I tell my people that change life all the time. People can make you so mad. There's so, there's so many people have made me so mad. I mean, angry. I mean, just angry beyond anger. And what I did was, in, right there in front of them, I carried myself in a righteous way. Why? Because I don't know who's looking. But behind closed doors, I'm going to be honest with mine, behind closed doors, I called them all sorts of names. And I, I was so mad, I darn near bit my lip to bleeding. But out in the public, what those that are watching saw was me handling things in a righteous way. So you can, you can, people can say, well, oh, God, she's an easy pushover. Oh, oh, she she does. She just let them treat her any kind of way. No, I handle things in a righteous way because I give it to God. But that for that moment between uh, after I handle things in a righteous way before I give it to God, in that little moment, in that little transition moment, I call them all sorts of names. I, I cuss first, do whatever I have to. And then I repent, give it to God, move on. Keep it moving. So the, the same positivity that you you want to bring in, you got to also let out. It has to reflect around itself. You got to throw back what you're trying to take in. Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you for this opportunity, Lord. I thank you for giving this, this uh, word on Meditation Monday. I pray that it be a blessing to somebody and they take this and grow even stronger in you, God. Lord, if there's someone out there who have not accepted Jesus Christ as they, Lord, and say, I hope that they take this opportunity to accept him. <coughs> Excuse me. To accept him as they lord and savior lord i just pray right now lord that the people that are hearing this is motivated to do things in a more positive way today than they have done in past time lord i just thank you for being our god i thank you for your love i thank you for your support and i pray that you continue to strengthen us on this spiritual journey we love you god and we honor you in your precious son jesus name amen